Hey folks, this is Zach. I am still hiking through this ravine and I'm coming to you from America, of course, where at the moment, white people are the majority. But projections say that in the next 10 or 20 years, that will not be the case. No, at some point in the future, Caucasians will not be the majority in America. Maybe 20, 30, 20, 40, 20, 50, Hispanics will be the largest percentage of uh, like a large percentage ethnic group in America. It's going to be interesting to see how my fellow Caucasians deal with that. Because I have to say, after traveling in countries where I was very much in the minority, it's a weird feeling sometimes. Now, I started off my traveling in Israel, and I look pretty Jewish. Uh, they definitely thought I did. So, it sort of just felt like walking in an exotic, in an exotic, but... Uh, uh, non-threatening is the wrong word just like an exotic sort of America where I still fit in most people still spoke English uh, I didn't really have any trouble with that it was just it just felt freeing because no one knew me there you know you can sort of do what you want and there's fewer consequences but after that I did the sort of polar opposite I went to India I was there a couple months I uh, went to all sorts of different cities and towns actually uh, took trains buses walked on foot uh, swam at one point <laughs> which ended badly but uh there it was the wrong season it was monsoon season uh, there were not many foreigners there and to be a foreigner there during the off season when there's very few tourists is to be a target it felt like uh, but both a target and also like a target for good things also when I say target I was about to say I don't mean for crime but I do have stories from India uh, about that but uh, I meant more for like people who think that you are rich automatically because you are a pale skinned foreigner. Uh, shopkeepers would literally say, please help a poor shopkeeper buy something. And I, I didn't want to buy anything from that stall because every other stall sold the same stuff. Uh, I ended up, I did buy something in that case. But people sort of treat you like you have a lot of money even if you don't really. Uh, and in some cases it could be less pleasant attentions when you stick out from the crowd like that. Uh, at one point during a very heavy thunderstorm, someone sort of picked the lock to my room and crept in and stole my phone off the charger, which was sort of surreal seeing that on the CCTV camera after, uh, because they could have slit my throat just as easily. I was sleeping right there. Uh, fortunately, they just stole my phone. <laughs> I had to get a new one. But that's different. I mean, you could look like a target even if you're not uh, ethnically um, an, a minority in a certain place. When I was in Israel, actually, uh, a fellow Florida man who I met there got mugged once or twice in a week. At least once, but I remember seeing him come back to the hostel later with a bloody nose again. So I have a very strong feeling he got mugged twice. Just because he was out walking in a bad place at night and someone jumped him. But uh, in some places, being in a minority group could be dangerous, I guess. Uh, I was... I always ended up walking around places late at night, which is not always advisable, uh, depending where you are, what country you're in, what place in that country you're in. I mean, for the most part, uh, foreign countries are generally safer than any American city. Uh, I feel safer walking around at night in the poorer parts of Bali, than I, or Borneo especially, than I would in the poorer parts of an American city, uh, where I fit in like with the other people there. But at some points, when I was walking around certain areas at night, people did look at me sort of like, some of them looked at me like, what are you doing? Why, why are you out here at night? That's dangerous. Some of them looked at me in like, just a strictly predatory way. And fortunately I am relatively tall and muscular. I walked with a purpose, you know? So I didn't have any trouble like that. But uh, I could see how it would be a lot tougher if you were a single woman in that situation. At the same time, still in India, uh, People helped me a lot just because I was a foreigner. Uh, I got train tickets, they sold me the sort of wrong class. I was trying to get a sleeper class, they sold me standing room tickets. And for like a full day on the train, the locals who befriended me were like, whenever a ticket inspector came by, they said, he did not know, they sold him the wrong tickets, uh, leave him alone. And he did for the longest time. Uh, then I think my real experience came when I went to the city of Visakhapatnam uh, for a couple of weeks. And during the whole two weeks I was there, I was the only white dude I saw. Uh, which I didn't even think about at the time. Uh, once you're used to that, at least for me, I didn't think about it. 
And it was the same thing when I was teaching for a year in, uh, in Borneo. Uh, there were not, I could count the number of foreigners I saw there on my hand. And that's, it wasn't something I thought of uh, once I got used to it there. Uh, sometimes I miss speaking with a native English speaker just because we'd have uh, more complex conversations, but I didn't look at like skin color and think, wow, I want to see some other white people here. It never crossed my mind, really. Actually, for the most part, uh, it's, it's good to be a minority in, at least a pale skin minority in certain countries. Uh, obviously, there's some places where people look at you as an easy target because you don't know where you're going. You don't have like a safety net of people, you know. But uh, some of the countries I went to, like uh, Thailand and uh, Indonesia, you go inside the store, every skincare product says skin whitening, which is, I'm sure it has something to do with the poor people have to work out in the sun all day. So if you have lighter skin, it looks like you get to work indoors and you have more money, something like that. But uh, people just wanted to take selfies with me just because they hadn't seen many light-skinned foreigners in their life. Uh, it's, it's, it's like you're a local celebrity when you're walking down the street. People kept asking if I was like an artist, like a, uh, in a band or something. I've been read stories and heard stories from people who worked in China about uh, white monkey jobs where you don't need to have any skill. Uh, you will just get hired by a company to sort of stand at the window of their business, like on the second or third story, stand near the window and look like you're doing something and it gives the company prestige because they can afford to hire a pale skinned foreigner, which is hilarious. Uh, the government actually cracked down on that there. Uh, there was a, I think it was a food company that hired a bunch of shirtless white dudes to walk down the street touting their product and they all got arrested, <laughs> which is absolutely hilarious, of course. That's all in stark contrast to America, where if you're in a minority group, uh, it doesn't help you really uh, aside from like affirmative action but that's just to like make up for all the past transgressions against minority groups it's not like when you're in uh, Borneo and everyone wants to take a selfie with you because they've never seen a, a white person before it's more like you just have I don't know it's not the experience I faced in America so I don't think I'm qualified to describe it really if if you have faced experiences like that here, please leave a, leave a comment below. What I was trying to say is that in the next 20 or 30 years, uh, white people won't be the majority here in America. And I feel like the culture is going to keep changing. It's, it's going to keep changing in the way that, uh, especially the old generation is going to find uncomfortable, uh, which for me, I, I like that because they have been far too comfortable. But uh, it's going to be interesting seeing how the culture in America changes as more and more ethnic groups become like comparable in like the percentage of people in America. Well, it's more even and there's, there's not a group that's just like sort of controlling a lot of the society. I can't wait to see how things, how the, just the culture will change here. I definitely think that in the end, a lot of people who have taken things for granted their whole life are gonna realize they've been taking things for granted. They're gonna realize that they don't, they've had special privileges that they won't have anymore. And uh, especially a lot of uh, very far left or far right people who have been fighting against certain privileges or uh, fighting for them, they're gonna realize that things are different once uh, all the sort of makeup of the country changes. So uh, <laughs> it's, that's a that's a tough topic to talk about. I, I don't feel like I'm in any way qualified aside from having been in countries as a very small minority in that country. Uh, I, I, I know America is going to be very different than like India or Borneo in terms of how we treat our minorities generally in a bad way. But uh, if you have any ideas about that or if you have experiences you want to talk about about that, put them in the comments below. I'm sure everyone's interested in hearing them and uh, Till then, folks, peace out. <laughs> See you all later.